So in this video, we're going to go through external economies and diseconomies. Now, the change in long-run equilibrium price following a permanent change in demand depends on two things. External economies, which are factors beyond a firm's control that lowers the firm's cost as the industry output increases, and external diseconomies, which are factors beyond the firm's control that raises the firm's cost as industry output increases. Now, the key words in these uh, two uh, definitions are lower the firm's cost for economies and raises the firm's cost for diseconomies. Now, if both are absent, the firm's costs will remain constant as market output changes. The definition for long-run market supply is pretty pretty much uh, long-run market supply. The long-run market supply curve illustrates the variation of quantity supplied in market as the market price varies after all possible adjustments are made, and this includes changes in plants and number of firms in the market. Now, this first graph shows is shows this case when uh, no external economies or diseconomies exist. An increase in demand does not change the price in the long, in the long run. The, having D0, this light blue curve, as our original demand, if the, if the demand increases and shifts rightward to D1 to this red line, uh, what happened is that uh, the increase in demand doesn't really change the price. The price keeps at zero uh, at all costs. So at first, uh, the original demand shifted rightward and uh, immediately this was the new equilibrium point. But then um, due to some causes, uh, well, due to the fact that there's no external economies or this economies, what happened is that the price actually did not change so the price will fall back downwards to p0 now the same cannot be said for external discounties when external discounties are present um, only external discounties are present an increase in demand causes an increase in price in the long run so the long run market supply curve lsb actually slopes up and that is uh, why i'm telling you to remember the keywords it raises the firm's cost. This is this economy. So this upward slope really signifies the raising of the firm's cost. And the logic behind this is external diseconomies raises costs. And to cover these costs, we have to raise prices. So uh, here's our original demand. Uh, demand change. So we, uh, so we shift our demand curve to D1 rightwards. And this was the, this was the original uh, this is what happened immediately to our new immediate equilibrium point but due to this economies uh, the price goes down to p2 so what happened is the price originally rose to p3 but it ultimately in the long run fell back to p2 but overall in the long run uh, the increase in demand did cause an increase in price in the long run and the last, the last factor is external economies. And when external economies are present, uh, increase in demand causes a decrease in price in the long run. So what happened here is, again, this is our original demand curve, this light blue line. Um, when there is an increase in demand, uh, the curve shift rightward to this new long red line. And immediately, the price went up. Uh, to this new equilibrium point PS and um, over time in the long run the price really actually fell fell to this new point which is P2 and I am beach balling god these max so shitty so it fell back to P2 so in the long run what you could say happened is that new firms uh, saw the opportunity in this new market, all the money they were making, and they, they just uh, there was incentive for them to enter this market, and this caused the price to fall so steeply. So the logic is, uh, external economies lowers costs, and that will lower prices. So I guess that example with the new uh, with the new firms uh, entering the market because there's an incentive. It's not really 
um, is not really a good example of that here. The main thing you gotta remember in external economies is just that when we have external economies, there are factors beyond a firm's control, and these factors lowers the firm's costs as the industry output increases. So I suppose that you can say here a better uh, factor to say here is that uh, perhaps when there was an increase in demand, uh, there was an uh, increase in uh, in improving. There was a demand. Well, when there was an when an increase in demand occurred from D zero to D one, uh, technology for production also in, uh, also increased or also improved and that lowered the cost which lowered the prices so I'm just gonna go through a little bit about technological change now technical new technologies are really fast in appearing and they constantly lower costs and they really contribute to external economies as I just mentioned and new technology enables a firm to produce at a lower average cost and lower marginal costs so the firm's costs ultimately the firm's cost curves ultimately shifts downward now firms that adopt a new technology are likely to make an economic profit now new technology firms enter and old technology firms they are left with a couple of choices they are forced to exit or they are forced to adopt a new technology and uh, Industry supply increases and industry supply curve shifts rightward ultimately. And price also falls and quantity increases. So eventually a new long run equilibrium emerges in which all firms uses the new technology. And the price equals the minimum average total cost and each firm will break even or make zero economic profit. Now, a little bit about resources. Uh, resources will be used efficiently when no one can make can or when no one can be better off without making someone else worse off. So pretty much when marginal social benefit equals marginal social social costs, then we got an efficient use of resources. And I think that will be all in this video. And next we will go through choices, equilibrium, and efficiency. And uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next